Welcome back to another episode of Spilling the Tea with Dr. T. And G. And Lavali. <laughs> you hesitated. Did you forget Lavali's name? I was going to say Lee, but it's actually L because of the letter. Right. Lee. Lavali. Lavali. I guess we can call it Lee. Yeah, because there's T, G, and Lee. But and Lee. It's not the L. It's like this. Right. Thing. See? Mm-hmm. See, there's, there's a little bit of hesitation. Yeah. But here we are again. Another episode. Another topic. Another topic. This one is good. Yeah. They're Very all, excited. I mean, I'm biased. I think they're all good. But yeah. this is interesting. Definitely, again, something that I've heard through the grapevine from various patients and didn't have much, you know, understanding or recommendations to give in this department. I knew that they were relatively safe. So happy to kind of walk through some of these uh, topics. And today we're going to be discussing... Are sex toys safe? We're going to find out. And there's definitely some things to avoid. There's some things that we recommend trying. And there's some things that I found very interesting in my research. We're going to give you some recommendations as well as practice examples. (laughs) Oh, you're going to give some practice examples? Yeah. There we go. We'll see what happens in the video. Stick around. (laughs) Okay. Let's start with the basics, as always. What is the definition of a sex toy? So a sex toy is an object or a device or item that is used to enhance uh, sexual satisfaction, intimacy, um, pleasure, and can be used in solo play, so alone or partner play or group play. So you can kind of take it as far as you'd like with how you use them. And again, sex toys are used for a range of purposes. Uh, Some people use them for solo masturbation play, Others use them with their partner to enhance the sexual activity. And then others can use them in between or with groups or however they like. That's sort of the sort of way of how they work is you really can use your imagination and whatever kind of floats your boat. Whatever you like with sex toys. There's yeah. no rules. Well, there are some rules. Actually, Ooh. it's great that you say that because there are some rules and we're going to get into those. Oh, Do we know how common is the use of sex toys? So sex toy use specifically by men has been increasing over the last couple decades. Uh, In the past, there was some hesitation there for a multitude of reasons. And it's really difficult to pinpoint the exact percentage or amount of people that use sex toys as it can often vary on their age, their culture, their religion, or just their sexual orientation in general. As some people think it's a specific uh, sexual orientation that's more predominant to use sex toys. Sex toys for everybody. Sex toys for everybody. Put it in the water. Put it in the water. So we do have some data. Back in 2015, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Sexual Health. And there they did a survey to see uh, in American men between the ages of 18 and 60 how often or if they had ever used a sex toy. And over 45% of men had mentioned that they have at least used a sex toy at some point in their lives. So that was kind of interesting to see. Right. Another study published in 2019 in the Journal of Sexual Medicine showed that men between the ages of 18 and 65 were using sex toys, at least in their experience, more often. So about 58% of men in that pool were um, reporting to using sex toys at some point in their lives. And so that actually was done in the UK. So again, different culture, different environment. Maybe this is, you know, impacting the survey results or uh, something else, and we don't know. But we do know that, in general, about one in two men at some point in their lives, at least European or American men, um, will probably partake in sex toy use at some point. Is that considered a large number of people using sex toys? You know, I don't know. I mean, I think so. I definitely would be surprised to know that one in two or 50% of men out there were using some sort of toy. Um, I certainly have never heard of them uh, growing up or like, (laughs) I didn't think that they were a part of our culture in America. I even when I became more sexually active, I don't think everyone, anyone has ever like mentioned one to me or, or sort of brought it up. And of course that can be different factors at play there, but I certainly did not expect one and two right. to be uh, using some sort of toy at some point. Because in the queer community, we see sex toys used in more often, I think. And maybe that number, if we're talking about the queer population, I would think, yeah, that's true. Because I would assume that there's more use of sex toys. But 
when you consider all men population, it's it's a lot. Yeah, I, I was surprised too. And like you mentioned, you know, the queer population, at least in my idea or stereotype of us, we have more of an open perspective right. on these types of things. It's certainly not necessarily true for everyone, but I guess culturally uh, we do oftentimes can reflect on these things or have the discussion more openly. I think when you are in with a, a same-sex partnership, you just maybe sometimes feel more at ease to talk about things because... Right. You're the same sex, you know, and so those those things can sometimes feel a little less burdensome to bring up or to express interest in. Um, but yeah, that's my personal view on it. I'm not exactly sure there's no data to back that up. But yeah, it's definitely a surprise that 50% of men, you know, had experienced sex toy use. So good for them. Good for them. Yeah. You keep using it. Absolutely. <laughs> and what are the options when it comes to sex toys? Yeah, so the categories of sex toys, especially in the modern day, it appears to be pretty much endless, but we can try to separate them into kind of four main classes or categories that we can kind of discuss further. Number one, prostate massagers are extremely common for men to use, so we'll be diving into those. Uh, masturbation sleeves are also another commonly used or reportedly used sex toy. We'll talk about penis rings or cock rings, which oh. are pretty popular. And then finally, dolls or like blow up dolls or some sort of device used to mimic uh, another person. So that would be interesting and, and definitely the most commonly used sex toys, um, at least from my research. <laughs> Never thought of cock rings being sex toys. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely an interesting device. They are meant to improve erections. And so maybe some people wouldn't consider them sex toys either. I have many patients that have a history of erectile dysfunction or maybe are resistant to some of the erectile dysfunction medications that are not working for them. So they've tried these devices and maybe they wouldn't consider them toys either. But I mean, that's kind of what they fall under unless you want to call them a medical device, which I don't think. No, I don't think. I mean, in a way, but... More along the lines of enhancing sexual yeah, pleasure. Enhancing ex the experience of sex. So. For sure, yeah. So sex rings. Se sex rings? Cock rings are a sex toy. Yeah, cock rings are a sex toy. Let's get into the background of sex toys. All right. Are sex toys a new concept? So let's break it down to what I like to call sex toys a history. Ooh. <laughs> let's go down... In the memory lane of the history of sex toys with Dr. T. So sex toys have been around and used throughout history and really predating even the earliest civilizations. We do know that the earliest found sex toy, um, which resembled a phallic sort of symbol or looked like a male genitalia made out of stone, was uh, originally to have been used 28,000 years ago before the Paleolithic era or in the Paleolithic era and uh, been used for sexual pleasure as well as possibly like fertility rituals. Oh my God. And so for those out there who follow like the paleo lifestyle, sex toys are paleo appropriate because they use them in the Paleolithic area. Just please don't use stones. <laughs> yes, we don't need to use stones anymore. We have some <laughs> better materials, which we'll get into later in the video. But yeah, they've been around for a really long time. Um, humans have been trying to... Uh, entertain themselves this way for thousands and thousands of years. That's fascinating. Who would have thought? And of course, we can always go back into Greece. Ooh. Greece is certainly one of my favorite areas to research about and to learn history-wise. But what we have found is that in the Greek culture, they would celebrate the god Dionysus, who is the god of fertility and sex. And so they would have lots of phallic symbols and uh, things they would use for rituals, which may have also included some self-pleasure and pleasure of the other people with those devices. And so in Greece, they were using sex toys as well. Oh my God, the Greek knew how to have fun. <laughs> the Greek knew how to have fun oh, for, for sure. sure. Alexander was getting down <laughs> <laughs> with his sex toys. Then we see in ancient Rome, men were actually using dildos made out of leather, wood, and stone. And they were actually even connecting them to some sort of mechanical device that could help to stimulate more pleasure. And so as time went on, they got more evolved with yes. the type of materials that they were using. And then we see the Middle Ages. Oh, not a good time for a sex toy. Not a good time for sex toys. So, of course, uh, religion was uh, in power 
yeah. very strong during the Middle Ages. And so there was kind of a fallback in the use of sex toys. However, they were still a Around. part of culture. They were still <laughs> there, just harder to find, harder to see. Just in the black market. Yes. And then whenever the Protestants started taking over, they actually started to allow them. And Ooh. so the Protestant Reformation um, was a big deal in the sex toy space because they let people have more privacy and more... Uh, freedom, I guess. And so that's when we saw a slight resurgence occur. And then, of course, we move into the 19th century. Oh, wow. The golden age for sex toys. So believe it or not, in the 19th century, sex toys were finally openly sold in the markets wow. in the United States and Europe. And actually, the first vibrator was invented in the 19th century in the United States. And so that was revolutionary, of course, uh, in the space for sex toys. We still use them today. And so they've certainly made their mark uh, for both males and females. But it's so interesting to think that these things have been around for so long because in my head, I think of them as like a, something that has arrived Modern. in the last 50 years, maybe, yeah. you know, but humans have been getting it on since the beginning of time. And whether they're going to do it alone or with people, they want to hype it up and enjoy themselves the best they can. And sometimes that involves finding some toys to play with. And they use what they got. They use stones, <laughs> leather, vegetables, wood, fruits. <laughs> we didn't get that far, but they probably, they probably did. And yeah, though, I mean, like you mentioned, anything that's around. I mean, I'm sure it's hard to find data that they used fruits and vegetables as they usually decompose over time, whereas leather and wood and stone, we still have those relics. But I can guarantee if they were using stone, they were probably using eggplants and carrots and uh, yeah. whatever else they could get their hands on. I wonder if there's a museum of sex toys. I'm sure. We need to figure that out. Absolutely. If you know about yeah. a museum that we can visit... That learn would be, more that would be good to do some research and absolutely i mean we love history we love sexual health combine them too i'm sure i mean and we love museums i think there's never been a museum we've been to that we were like this isn't working right. for us we don't like it here <laughs> <laughs> so culturally speaking have sex toys always been discouraged so cultural attitudes towards sex toys have always kind of gone back and forth there are some periods where they were accepted and even emphasized or embraced. And then there are others when they were discouraged. And then we look at specific examples, of course, in Greece and in Rome, where sex toys were used in multiple methods from rituals and sort of religious ceremonies to also self-pleasure and really a part of the cultural impact and, and sexuality in those periods. And then we fast forward, of course, to the Middle Ages, where the church heavily frowned on the use of sex toys and considered the behavior to be deviant. There are some uh, research that also shows that sex toys were considered to be a form of witchcraft in the Middle Ages. So, you know, anything unusual was Harry Potter. To right. Think, so. <laughs> Black magic. Yeah. So, you know, they've had their ups and downs. And then I even think about towards, you know, uh, relevant, you know, current times, um, even when I was younger and, and started to kind of express my sexuality, it was never something that I thought I should venture into mm -hmm. or look into. Granted, I grew up religious and in a conservative household, but the people around me weren't necessarily that way, especially in my early 20s. And definitely not something that I saw at anyone's house or was encouraged to participate in. So, you know, I think culturally it, it still kind of goes back and forth depending on who you're around. And um, I'm sure many people would consider this, even if they're open-minded, would consider toys to be a, a hard line that they don't personally want to cross. So it's, I think, different for everybody. Yeah, I grew up in Brazil. So in Brazil, I think it's very similarly, have a very similar culture when it comes to sex toys because sex toys are not openly talked about it or encouraged in our culture, yeah, we funny. never saw them as a as a positive thing, as a thing that can enhance sex. And right. even growing up, we never talked about it at home or at school. Yeah, and that's I think one of the reasons why I wanted to bring up this topic is because they can enhance, you know, your sexual experience. They can help you to explore things that maybe you're not comfortable with yet or that you want to try in the comfort of your privacy or with someone that you trust or with people that you enjoy having fun with. And so you can really take it anywhere you want it to. And ultimately, you know, sex is about enjoying yourself, enjoying your partner. And so some people venture into other relationships or venture out of their current relationship because they're not satisfied. And so toys can be a really beneficial way to kind of spice things up between you and your partner without having to expand further or your group or yourself. And so 
uh, really just giving yourself more options to to have uh, a good time and celebrate your body and sexuality is hopefully what this you know message will convey give yourself more options yeah to celebrate your body diva glam <laughs> <laughs> life is a celebration that's a deep cut and of course, in recent times, just with us bringing up this video, attitudes have, I think, started to open up and change with sex toys becoming a little bit more accessible. I mean, I think they've always been accessible, but you can purchase them online now and have them delivered to your home discreetly. I see it a lot on social media. There's yeah. a definite sex positive sort of um, message out there that some people are are helping to thrive and others are trying to kind of push push aside but there is a sort of sex positive energy moving um you know forward and hopefully that continues but that being said there are still many countries many religions many cultures that heavily frown upon any sort of self-pleasure any type of sexual experimentation any type of way in which you can, um, you know, express your sexuality, even when you are straight or, or mm. anything, you know, that would be considered the norm. And so definitely still a lot of taboos out there, a lot of misinformation. And hopefully, again, this clears some things up and helps people feel more uh, supported if this is something that they're interested in. Hopefully this video can help people to open their minds if, yeah. if they're not open to sex toys, for example, or yeah, and maybe someone is not open to it, but their partner is. And so maybe this will help them to kind of understand maybe where their partner is coming from. Um, but yeah, it's it's still a taboo, even in some American households. Everything around sex is a taboo. Isn't it funny? I know. I don't understand. But, but here's the thing. So there are a few ways to gain power in the world, right? You can gain power through money. You can gain power through information, resources, information, and sex is a big way to gain yeah. power, especially if you don't have anything else to offer, yeah. right? And so it's a way to silence people. It's a way to remove um, their freedom. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's controversial. It's controversial. Definitely <laughs> controversial. So now that sex toys are thriving in the current times, what are the main types of sex toys out there? Right, so there are many different options for men to choose from out there, but first up, let's talk about prostate massagers. Right. Yeah, so in a previous video, we've talked about how the prostate can be a pleasure center and can be a, a very strong form of increasing intimacy and increasing satisfaction during sex, but not everyone gets to experience that stimulation because some people prefer uh, to avoid things going into their backside. And there can be reasons for that. There can be, um, you know, anxiety, stress, any sort of mental health anguish or concern about that happening is going to make it an uncomfortable experience because you do have to relax. There are also physiological reasons. Maybe their sphincters aren't responding to how they want them to. So prostate massagers can be a great substitute because they can reach the prostate with a very small or thin shaft, allowing to avoid any sort of irritation into the anal cavity or canal while still reaching that area and massaging it for more pleasure. And as we know, the more you massage that area, the more likely you're going to experience an exaggerated orgasm and sexual response. Yeah, we learned that in a previous video. Yeah, that's where we learned that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd we, never known. We just I just learned that. I didn't know that until Same. recently. Yeah, it was yeah. brand new. Brand new information. <laughs> if you don't know yet, please go check our other video. Yeah, that's yeah. a great recommendation. Yeah. We also tell people how to find the prostate and we tell them it's not very deep. And yeah. all that all those information you can find it. Yeah, if you need directions to your prostate, we outline that in one of the previous videos. Very detailed explanation. And believe it or not, there's actually some clinical evidence that shows that massaging the prostate can reduce your risk of prostate cancer. So there is some positive benefits out there beyond just the pleasure that can arise from a prostate massager um, that could help you health-wise in the long run. And so, again, a great reason to consider trying one if you haven't. There are many different options. Some just kind of move into that direction and stay there. And then if you'd like to really amp it up, you can get a battery powered uh, option that moves around or vibrates. So options are pretty much limitless when it comes to finding a way to stimulate your prostate and exaggerate your sexual experience. 
Oh, so massaging the prostate can actually prevent you from cancer. Yeah. That's, that's great true. news. It's great news. That's why we all should be massaging our prostates. So prostate massager, we're going to have to add that one to our list. We're going to have to add it to the list. What else is all there? Well, next up, Ooh. we have the masturbation sleeve is what it's called. Or a stroker is another <laughs> term. It's an interesting way of referring to it. But it is meant to be a sort of tight, flexible um, material that allows you to insert yourself. And it's supposed to simulate either vaginal or anal intercourse and allow you to have solo play. Or you can certainly use it you know, with a partner or in other settings. Um, but it's meant to kind of emulate uh, a similar intercourse activity and um, give you independence. Give you some independence. Exactly. And again, there are many materials that they come in. And so you can try to find one that is similar to skin as possible. Or if you're looking for something different, a lot of times they have different textures, which can really enhance the uh, experience as well. Um, typically, they are meant for solo play, but you can, again, use them with your partner, especially if you are a receiver and you want to have both sort of stimulations happening at the same time. Why not? All together, all at once, at yeah. the same time. Just add both together and you have kind of the, the best of both worlds. I mean, why not? Why not? So that's number two. Let's keep going. Let's keep I'm going. enjoying this. What else do we need to add to the list? Yeah, so let's add another one to the list. Ooh. And that's going to be the penis ring or cock ring. All right. So these are relatively common, uh, especially for those that have experience with erectile dysfunction or having a difficult time achieving or maintaining an erection. So how a penis ring or a cock ring works is they're usually made of various materials from plastic to silicone to rubber, gel-like materials, leather, you name it, you could probably find one. And how it works is you would apply it at the base of the penis and so it obstructs blood flow and allows blood to be congested into the genitalia. An example being, so if you were to put a ring around the base of the penis, it closes the weaker veins, which are thin walled vessels and are easily compressed. And then it allows for the arteries to stay open because they're stronger walled. And so pressure of the blood is moving into the penis through the artery, but can't leave the penis through the vein because the veins take blood away. And so that allows for more blood to be congested into the organ, creating a more firm erection. And oftentimes erectile dysfunction is due to weak veins that are allowing blood to uh, return through the penis and so it's not able to get firm and so these kind of combat that problem and so oftentimes people will use them to enhance their erections or allow for their erection to remain strong after climax so they can go multiple times and again it kind of crosses into the line of medical device in right. some ways because we use it for some medical conditions but in general young people healthy people those without erectile dysfunction symptoms can use right. them and find a lot of benefit as that can also increase pleasure the more blood in the genitalia the more sensitive it's going to be um so yeah they're a great option they're probably the cheapest sex toy you can get started <laughs> with so if you're looking to uh, shop on a dime and uh, start something new. They can be a great place to get started. The one thing you do want to be aware of with all sex toys and cock rings or penis rings, uh, you don't want to overdo it. Right. So because you are obstructing blood flow out of the genitalia with the ring, you want to make sure you don't feel any discomfort. You don't feel any pain. Your genitalia should not look blue or purple or, <laughs> or bruised. So those are things to be aware of. And you don't want to use one for too long, right? An erection lasting more than four hours is considered a problem um, with erectile dysfunction medicine. I can imagine wearing a cock ring for four hours would also be a problem. So limit the uh, duration and how long you're using it. If you feel discomfort, stop take a break, and you can always put it back on after you've given yourself some rest. Don't overdo on cock rings. On really anything in life, right. you know, just yeah. don't overdo it. It's all ah, about balance. It's all about balance, and that's the lesson that we learn here every episode. <laughs> balance <laughs> is the key. You can always overdo it. Yeah. And you can always underdo it. Even water, we learned in the previous episode, it can overdo on water so yeah, overdo it on water but drink lots of water yes. that's not an excuse drink water keep drinking water just keep drinking yeah. water but going back to cock rings i think it's always nice to have a firm erection yeah it's always a plus um definitely gives you a confidence boost and makes the experience just a little bit yeah, better just enhancing the experience yeah that's what we like to do here yeah. 
But last but not least, let's talk about the infamous, the infamous blow up dolls. They used to be just blow up dolls, but now uh, in today's day and time, they're quite um, advanced. Ooh. You know, they come in mannequin like. Very similar skin textured silicone that technology. have robotic features. Yeah, so technology has really evolved the traditional blow up doll. So, back in what my head sees is what would be often in comedy movies, they'd have like this literal doll with an open mouth that, you know, was literally made of plastic and looked like something that would be floating in a pool. But now they don't quite look like that. And so, the point of these is to, you know, simulate another human. So maybe you can increase your confidence or increase um, your self esteem while trying to get used to your sexual activity or your sexuality. And so there can be a lot of good there. Obviously, you want to, you know, experiment with yourself and your privacy of your home, and having a doll may be a successful way to do that. Um, but yeah, they really have kind of taken over with how similar they're trying to get to another human. And the main thing you want to be aware of if using one of these dolls is they have a very extensive care management slash sure. hygiene routine, right? So they are just like humans, breeding grounds for bacteria and pathogens. So after using one, you need to make sure you are cleaning it very well. And these are very expensive um, and, you know, take a lot more time than uh, any other toy. So I wouldn't recommend them for a beginner. But hey, if this is your interest, absolutely dive into it. Uh, just know that they're definitely a more expensive and more um, task-oriented toy to, to start with. Have you ever seen a sex toy doll or like a, a blow-up doll or mannequin, anything like that? Mm, only in movies, only yeah. on TV. But crazy how far we came with sex toys. Yeah. The Greeks will be proud of us. Yeah, you know, we even, you know, kind of to segue out of this for a moment. So AI is taking over and mm. they're talking a lot about like what AI is going to do with sex toys because if you have a robot and these dolls, like what what is the next phase of that? So it's going to be very interesting to see. And sex is often on the top of how things evolve, technology. And so it'll be really interesting to see where this goes. So maybe we'll have another talk one day about sex toy AI. Who knows? That movie Blade Runner 2049, there's a there's a, a robot or she's like a she looks like a human person. Right. And she has sex with him. Right. And uh, she's kind of like the sex toy, but also the the ai she does everything else like she's the wow. she's she's a human but at the same time she's like does artificial. everything else. Yeah, artificial yeah, intelligence. Like that. that's the thing is it's like they get so evolved that where does the humanity start yeah. and where does the ai stop yeah and also I you hope, know sexually give pleasure which is crazy yeah i hope that these are not problems that i experience in my lifetime i think yeah. i'm hoping this is the next generation <laughs> It's a little complicated for my brain. <laughs> I mean, I think by the time by the time those things start happening, we're gonna be too old to care. I hope so. I'm already almost too old to care. So now that we discuss all the sex toys options and the markets out there, let's talk about safety. Where are the safety concerns when it comes to sex toys? Right. So definitely something to be considered about anytime you're using any sort of device near or on your body you need to make sure you're following safety precautions and of course the first thing that comes to my mind when thinking of safety and sex toys is going to be the material that's used you want to make sure that there is no toxicity to any of the materials especially if they're being inserted or applied to your body uh, there are certain chemicals like phthalates that can be harmful to the human body if it's ingested or if it's on the skin. And so making sure you're picking the appropriate uh, material. And the most commonly used materials we're going to see is silicone, something called ABS plastic, and then glass. So those are the most commonly used sex toy materials. But again, if you find something different that is um, what you would consider safe based on your research, certainly can can try other materials but those are the main ones that are considered the most safe so let's start with silicone is silicone a safe material to use as sex toy yeah so silicone is probably the most commonly used commonly purchased commonly sought out material for sex toys of course it is non-porous which is important for a material to use when you're using it in this capacity because it's going to be easy to clean easy to sterilize. It's also very flexible and can have a very similar texture and feel to human skin or human uh, body parts. And so that's going to be a main reason that people kind of seek out the use of silicone. 
It's important that you look for what is considered medical grade or body safe silicone when selecting a product. Make sure they have that listed somewhere so that you know it is the appropriate type of silicone to use uh, for a sex toy. Hmm, sounds safe to me. Yeah, and again, silicone can be considered best because it's very flexible. You would use it more on toys that need to kind of be more bendy and movable right. and respond to pressure um, than some of the other materials. What about plastic sex toys? Yeah, so there are so many types of plastic, right? right. So you want to be really careful what type of plastic mm -hmm. that you're using because plastic can release a lot of small particles and chemicals into your body. They can be absorbed. And so what's considered the most safe plastic is something called ABS plastic. It's got a very long name that I'm not going to try to memorize. Uh, but it's the plastic that's used in like Legos. So it's very safe. People can put Legos in their mouth all the time. And, <laughs> you know, it's that toy safe version of plastic and what these are mainly used for is going to be the more hard or rigid type toys so things like vibrators that have like a handle and things like that uh, what else is great about plastic again is it's going to be non-porous so easy to clean and sanitize these are things you want to be conscious of when having a toy uh, but yeah definitely a great product of course plastic is rel relatively cheap too so oftentimes the more affordable toys are going to be made of that abs plastic so you said silicone plastic and did you say glass? Yeah, so believe it or not, glass is a great material to use because again, non-porous, easy to clean, easy to sanitize. And it's not the same kind of glass that's like making a window. <laughs> it's right. very thick glass, right? And it's gonna be what you would maybe see like a marble made out of or mm. like something ceramic. And of course you still have to be careful with it. If you drop it on the floor, it's gonna smash into a million pieces. But oftentimes the more rigid toys, like something that you would insert, um, can be made of glass. What's interesting too is some people will choose to heat them up or to oh. cool them down. So there can be some sort of extra layer of stimulation by changing the temperature. Uh, temperature. Yeah, and that's the only material that's going to respond well to changes right. in temperature. You will melt <laughs> everything else. So if you're interested in trying something like that, glass is going to be a go-to. Again, and relatively inexpensive in comparison to some of the silicone toys too. Um, so those are the main three materials that I would say are most commonly used and very easy uh, to clean and to maintain. Can the glass break inside of you? That would be very unusual. Okay. Again, these are not typically like fragile pieces in regards to moving them. It's more so fragile, like if you drop it on a, like a heavy surface um, or a flat, hard surface, of course, it's going to smash. But I, unless you're doing things that it's not intended for, I, there's very low probability that that would happen. That makes but that's sense. a good question. So when it comes to cleaning sex toys, how does that work? Yeah, so this is probably the most important thing to consider because if you use it and you wanna use it again, you need to make sure it's ready and prepared for you. And there are many bacteria that are all over us and get very excited during sexual activity because there's lots of things moving around, lots of fluids being exchanged. So you wanna make sure your devices are cleaned and it's really going to depend on what type of material is used. Of course, plastic and glass are relatively easy. Maybe some of them you just run water over with soap and that's plenty. You want to also read the instructions that the manufacturer is going to provide you. Most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, your device is going to come with some sort of insertable explanation of how to use it and how to clean it. And these are the things I would actually look at because how to clean your device will help it last longer. Some of these can be quite expensive. And some of the materials are very sensitive to detergent or certain type of cleaners. Some devices actually come with their own cleaning kit. So making sure that if you pick something that is pricey, has a unique material to it, and is designed to feel very human, it's probably going to have a more uh, complicated cleanup process and be willing to add that into your plan because you want to you know, expand the life of your device and make sure that it's going to be healthy and not carry pathogens or bacteria around with it when you use it you know, in subsequent times. So when buying sex toys, make sure getting the instructions manual. Yeah, make sure you know how to clean it. And if you don't, make sure it comes with an instruction manual. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. So we love talking about balance. Can you overuse sex toys? Absolutely. You can literally overdo anything and you can underdo anything. So sex toys falls into that category. You can certainly overuse them. Of course, you can overstimulate your prostate, which can cause irritation and discomfort. You can over friction your genitalia by using it too much, which could cause irritation to the skin. But what's going to be a great clue along the way is you're likely going to feel some sort of discomfort or irritation when you get to that level of misuse or using it too often. It's important to listen to your body. If you're feeling 
uncomfortable or if it's been going on for quite some time and you're starting to realize that it's not feeling the same, these are indicators that you're doing it too often or too long. So take a break, take a breather, switch it up. You know, maybe if you're using a toy on the front, try a toy on the back, then go back to the front. Um, whatever's gonna prolong your experience with minimal uh, adverse reactions. Listen so, to your body. Listen to your body, that's as simple as it gets. So in general, based on research, are sex toys considered safe? Yeah, so there's very little clinical research uh, on sex toys. The majority of it that's out there is also for women specifically, so we don't have a lot of data on men, but what we do know is that more sexual activity that is considered safe, which oftentimes sex toys are a great safe way because if you're using them in solo play, uh, there's little chance that you're going to get some sort of infection or, or something more considered unsafe when it regards to sex, that these sexual experiences increase our serotonin, our dopamine, and can be physically healthy and mentally healthy and provide many benefits. So uh, the research is out there to support frequent sexual activity that's considered safe as an overall healthy thing to do. Um, but we don't have, again, a lot of data. What we do know is avoid those materials that are considered unsafe, like we already talked about, and you should be good to go. And make sure you don't overuse because right. that can also be an issue. But if, other than those two outliers, um, it's, a, it's a very safe uh, hobby to form. <laughs> are all toys sold in U.S. safe? So there is no regulatory body or sort of standardized procedure that the United States has in place to make sure all the sex toys sold are considered safe. Of course, you can go online and buy things from pretty much anywhere and have them delivered to you in a day. So it's very difficult to monitor all of those things. I do always recommend proceeding with caution when buying a sex toy because like supplements and other things out there, they may list things that are not actually accurate. So finding a reputable brand, one that has lots of reviews, one that people may be recommended to you. Also, again, we see a resurgence of sort of um, sex positive information on social media and the internet. So finding you know, maybe the media accounts for some of these brands to see what people are saying. Doing a little bit of research will really pay off. Again, sex toys can be purchased um, at a very cheaply cost or a very expensive cost, but finding one that is cheap is probably not gonna be your best idea. It's not gonna last very long. Right. It may put you at risk for hurting yourself. So put the time in to find an option that's best for you and make sure that it is safe because you are gonna have to find that information out yourself. Unfortunately, there's nothing uh, keeping us safe to buy the right products in the United States. So what are the recommendations for someone looking to try sex toys for the first time? So my recommendations for someone who's looking to try a sex toy for the first time, number one, make sure the material is right. Make sure it's the type of material you're looking for. It's a safe material. Number two, make sure you're prepared to clean it. So whatever the cleaning instructions may be, if you're not aware of what they are, make sure you um, have the instructions with you when you purchase the device. Number three, be aware that you can overdo it. There are going to be signs that your body is telling you if you're feeling discomfort or irritation to stop and take a break and then go back to it whenever you're ready. Number four, you want to communicate. So if you're doing this with a partner, you don't want to surprise them. In the heat of the moment, you want to have boundaries set up, you want to have expectations set up so that they know what to expect as that may not go as you have planned. Number five, check in with yourself, monitor how things are going and be sure to learn so you would be prepared for next time. And finally, have some fun. You have made it probably a journey from deciding you want to purchase one to finally using it. Maybe you are fighting back some taboos, some religious constraints, some cultural concern, um, or maybe you didn't have any of that and this was smooth sailing for you. But either way, have a great time and know that what you're doing is right for yourself. It's about enjoying your own body and your sexuality. And hopefully this is just the beginning to a new journey for you. Wow, beautiful. Maya Angelou. <laughs> I'm the Maya Angelou of sex toys. <laughs> so number one, check the materials. Yes. Number two, cleaning process yep number three don't overdo it number four communication number five monitor your experience so you can do it again and number six have fun enjoy enjoy all right let's start my favorite part of these videos which is the misconceptions and myths 
that we have the questions from people and from patients. Let's dive in. Yeah, I like the myths because usually when I go through them, I'm learning things that I forgot or I heard as well in the past or maybe cultural um, sort of ideas that have been placed upon me. and so, Brainwashed. Yeah. So let's unbrainwash ourselves <laughs> and go through some of these misconceptions. Yeah. So misconception number one is sex toys are only for women. Yeah. So obviously a big misconception if you've already listened to this video or audio version, whatever you're consuming this information from. Yes. So unfortunately for this misconception, it is indeed a misconception. Men can partake in many different sex toys. But I think I also thought this sort of growing yeah. up. I think in media, we often see women purchasing sex toys. Yeah. It's always that single, sad, lonely lady who's desperate for attention. And so she goes in to purchase a sex toy, which which is very sad uh, as a, a misconception because it really makes the whole situation seem like this sort of um, desperate attempt yeah. to pleasure yourself when in fact it can be the complete opposite. So a very damaging misconception, men can certainly purchase and partake in the use of sex toys to expand their horizons and enjoy uh, their sexuality to its peak. And also a stereotype. Yes. on who is buying sex toys right it's always women in media yeah. at least what i've consumed and what i've seen sex toys are addictive yeah so while some people can enjoy using sex toys frequently i don't believe they are addictive <laughs> you know certainly you can become addicted to the feelings of sex and that is an extremely um exaggerated response i think you can become addicted to pretty much anything based on the definition. I mean, you've, there's TV shows where people are addicted to donuts or ice cream <laughs> or whatever. And so, yes, you can certainly overdo it. And if you want to call overdoing it an addiction, but if you look at the medical term, it's not addictive. It's not a habit forming routine that is going to call you back to it, you know, like a drug. So in a sense, yes, you can enjoy it frequently and maybe overdo it, but they're not addictive. Sex toys can cause erectile dysfunction. This is false. So there's no sex toys out there that are going to result in you having a weaker issue with uh, erections or a difficult time maintaining an erection. In fact, a lot of sex toys can help you to build your confidence, help you to build your self-esteem and to understand your sexuality better so that you can improve your erections. There are even some toys, like we mentioned, cock rings that can enhance your erection. So none of them are going to cause erectile issues. And if anything, they're going to boost your confidence and um, uh, create stronger erections for you. Sex toys are always safe. So unfortunately, there are sex toys that are manufactured unsafely using certain materials that have toxins in them. And there's not a great way to screen these things before they enter, you know, the ability to purchase them. So be cautious of what you're buying, especially if it's from a seller that you're not aware of who they are. Try to find a reputable brand that's going to be producing uh, safe equipment for you to use so that that's the last thing you have to worry about uh, throughout the process. Using sex toys is abnormal or deviant. So sex toys have been around, as we discussed, since I think the first one was found 28,000 years ago. So it's not something new. And cultural changes and uh, religious sort of impressions can have their pull on what society considers to be appropriate in that given time. We've seen sex toys be celebrated in many points of history and also be demeaned in others. Right now, um, it's kind of in the middle, depending on who you talk to. In general, I think we're moving in a direction that is more sex positive. And to finalize this question in a more simple term, absolutely not. There's nothing deviant or abnormal about using sex toys. They are safe and a great way to experiment either alone or with someone and further increase your satisfaction sexually and have a good time. Sex toys can replace the intimacy with the partner. So while sex toys can enhance intimacy and your connection with your partner, they are not alive. So you can't really have a human intimate connection with them. That being said, some people are able to, you know, live their life solo. And this can be a great thing to add into their life. So they're able to experience sexual pleasure. Uh, but in no way are sex toys going to um, remove the intimacy between you and your partner or steal it from, from you and your partner. Sex toys are expensive. So another misconception, there are many that I would consider to be expensive, but there are also many other affordable options. And if you're just kind of getting your foot wet into this space, 
don't go for the most expensive thing, of right. course. Try to find something that's affordable, but also quality made. It's going to last. The worst thing you can do is purchase something that's really cheap that could break or could cause you some sort of bodily harm or irritation that you have to continue to replace. So buy something that is going to last, but is affordable, like the many, many options that are out there. Sex toys are only for young people. Absolutely not. Sex toys can be used by any age group, uh, young, middle-aged, older. You're going to have the same opportunity for pleasure and enhancement regardless of your age. So there's definitely not an age limit on enjoying yourself. Toys for everyone. Yeah, put it in the water. Those are my myths and misconceptions. You did a great job answering all of them once wow. again. Very proud of you. Thank you. We, again, learned a lot today. This is a good one. A lot of history today. Yeah. Less medicine, more history, more cultural things that we get to learn here yeah. with you. I learned it myself. So it was exciting to see that the Greeks and Romans were having a blast. Yeah. Which I assumed. <laughs> they knew what's up. They knew what's up. <laughs> but hopefully this was somewhat educational, fun, and lighthearted discussion on the safety of sex toys. If you have any questions that we may have missed or concerns, things you've heard, please leave them in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer those and circle back maybe with another video on a topic related. If you have future topics you want us to talk about, put them there as well. Let us know. Any recommendations, please like, share subscribe post it screenshot screenshot drop a pen autograph yeah. all of the above because we yeah. want to see you next time we want to continue providing you some fun content so we look forward to seeing you next week when we drop another video until then have a great rest of your evening or afternoon morning or morning that's what it is <laughs> enjoy it and we'll see you next time bye prostate massager we're gonna have to add that to the list what else is all there? Probably massager. <laughs> I have to add that to the list. She likes to give me directions.